Okay, on this example, we're given a, an angle theta, five pi over three. We're asked to find the exact value of sine and cosine. Now there are a lot of different ways to ask the same question. We could be asked for the terminal point on the unit circle. Um, it's basically answering the same question. So we'll answer that as we go through as well. To do so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a reference angle. And I know we're dealing with radians here. I've gone ahead and uh, listed the quadrantal angles, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and we can think of that as two pi wrapping all the way around the circle. Okay, so the first goal is locate where is five pi over three gonna be? Which quadrant? So as we're looking at this, it's gonna be found in quadrant three, nope, four. Somewhere in here, because five pi over three, uh, that's bigger than one and a half pies, which would be three pi over two. Um, that's one and two thirds pies. So what we have going on is our angle wraps around all the way into the fourth quadrant. Next up, we wanna draw in our reference angle. Our reference angle is always created by going from wherever our initial uh, angle ends up, we're gonna draw that to the x-axis. So right in here, this is where sometimes we refer to this as theta bar, our reference angle is gonna fit. So now we have to calculate what is that reference angle going to be? Well, it's actually this angle that fits in between where the initial one landed and the x-axis. So in there, what we can do is we can think about, we could wrap all the way around here and that would be two pi minus the five pi over three so basically the further angle minus the shorter angle each time you're calculating your reference angle. And that's gonna be different if it's in the second quadrant or in the third quadrant. So to write this with a common denominator, I'm gonna think of this, these as both being fractions and I'm gonna be multiplying two pi by three over three to get that common denominator. So six pi over three minus five pi over three is gonna be pi over three. So our reference angle, theta bar in our case, is pi over three. Now we wanna use that and plug into sine and cosine. So initially these would have been sine of five pi over three and cosine of five pi over three. But now we wanna plug in our reference angle. So when we plug in our reference angle, sine of pi over three, and cosine of pi over three, we wanna be careful. This is the place where you have to be careful about as soon as we plug in that reference angle, is it gonna be positive or negative? So this goes back to, I, I like using this phrase, all students take calculus. It's a nice way to rem remember which quadrant um, sine, cosine, and tangent are going to be positive or negative in. So in the first quadrant, all of the angles, uh, all the trigonometric functions are going to be positive. In the second quadrant, sine is positive. Third quadrant, only tangent is positive. And in the fourth quadrant, um, cosine is going to be positive. So you base it on the first letter of each one of these words. All right, next up, what we want to do is cosine is going to be positive but because only cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant where the five pi over three landed, sine is gonna be negative. So it's right at this point that I wanna put a negative out in front of the sine function after I've plugged in the reference angle. From here, we just have to know um, pi over three is equivalent to 60 degrees. This should be one of our known um, trigonometric functions. So as we plug in um, pi over three into the sine function, we're gonna bring our negative along and we get square root of three over two. We can also plug it into the cosine function and it's gonna be positive one half. Now, as we were asked to find a terminal point, if that was in this question, all you have to remember is the terminal point is gonna be the cosine value of theta for the, basically the X value. And then the sine of theta is gonna be our Y value for this terminal point. So we've already done these calculations. That's gonna be positive one half, just plugging in what we have over on the left-hand side and negative square root of three over two for a nice exact 
terminal point. All right, I hope this helps out. Um, get this phrase down, the all students take calculus. It really does help. And get confident about whichever quadrant your initial angle lands in. Um, just remember it's the further side minus the shorter side to get that reference angle. And, um, and remember it's always drawn to the x-axis. You would never draw this reference angle to the y-axis. It's always drawn to the x-axis. All right, I hope this helps. Good luck to you on these.